Hello everybody. Um, if you recall from my last video, we did the basic installation where we load the operating system and we load the Sophos con you know, standard configuration. So basically the software is ready to go, but it doesn't really know anything about your network. Now if you had things plugged in when you did your configuration, it's probably picked up a lot of things such as your, you know, a cable modem or maybe even your internal network. But typically when you do the installation, you're doing it uh, as a standalone device so that you can either recreate um, or you can restore a configuration or you can create one from scratch. So you're now ready to actually perform the configuration. So what I did is I loaded a, a old computer directly to the first port of the firewall. Um, you have to be on the first port because that's defined as the LAN port. The WAN port or the modem port we'll worry about later. We're just not going to hook anything up to it right now because we're not ready. So, and again, if you do just plug in your, your modem, it will just detect it. So it's not really a, a big problem if you've done that. I just, I'm just walking you through um, setting it up without really messing up what you have now and being able to ready to convert at, that, at any point. I'm going to load um, Chrome. It's going to time out here in a second because it's not finding an internet connection. And I'm going to go to the default address, which is HTTPS 172.16.16.16.4444. Um, and I'm going to go to that page. And as soon as I do, I'm going to be greeted with a welcome to Sophos XG Firewall. And this is sort of new. They didn't do this before. It's sort of a wizard so you're seeing this for the first time so uh, I'm seeing this for the first time so let's go ahead and um, click on begin and the first thing they want you to do is change the default password because uh, and that makes perfect sense so I'm gonna put in a new password okay and I'm not going to install updates right now I just want to get on with the configuration so I'm going to go down here agree to the license and hit continue. Okay, and this is where it's going to tell me basically, or actually it's going to give me the status of a whole bunch of things, but it's telling me right now that I've got an Ethernet cable on port 2. Um, you know, the kind of the status, it's asking me to do a manual configuration right now, or it wants me to continue offline. So I'm going to go ahead and continue offline for now, because I don't have anything hooked up to detect any of these. So I'm going to hit continue. And it's telling me, it's giving me the warning if you skip registration, some features may not work, etc. I don't care right now because I just want to get. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give the firewall a name. So I'll give it. Uh, something I can always change later and I got to set the time zone because again this isn't connected to um, the internet just yet so it can't auto configure anything there we go a lot of <clears throat> a lot of time zones and the current time is actually not that it's actually ten. This will all get resynced once everything is connected. I'm just doing it right now to just get to get things going. And it's actually AM, not PM. And I'm going to hit continue. So now it's giving me a um, status of where I'm at. It says I've got network protection, web protection, email protection, web server protection, sandstorm. And of course I have no support because this is a uh, home version. Um, it's asking me to opt in for the customer experience program. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, and I'm going to hit continue. So again, this is where it, you know, you, it starts to get into the configuration. So, um, I have a couple of choices I have to make. One is I can actually reassign for the land. I can actually assign one of the, um, 
other ports. Now, as I mentioned before, port 1, 3, and 4 if you have it, but at least port 1 is your LAN. Port 2 is reserved for the modem, so whatever you have, it's going to be that modem. Um, and then it also gives you an option, which some of you may want to choose, uh, that you can do a, either a firewall or a bridge mode. Now, I only use it as a firewall because I want everything in one. But you do have that option if you have a, already an elaborate configuration um, that doesn't really have the filtering and, and the power that you need. You can also put this in bridge mode and still get some of the security functionality. But you won't get some of the uh, internal routing protection that, that you're blocking that you may want. For example, you may want to block certain systems from accessing others uh, and you can only do that in the firewall in the firewall mode so anyway i'm gonna leave it at that um this is the basic uh, land configuration you can leave the defaults or if you prefer a different range now would be the time to change it and again the dhcp is actually enabled by default um for particular reasons you may want to disable it um in my old configuration uh, my this particular port was actually disabled from DHCP because I used port 3 and 4 to, to handle all of my networking. But again, it's up to you. It's not a, it's not a showstopper either way. If you've got a standard 2-port or 2-NIC or um, dual-port configuration, you know, with a dual NIC or two internal NICs, you can leave this as, you're going to have to leave this as DHCP and, um, the other one as because as the other one is dedicated to the modem so it's your call depends on your configuration and again you can change the range of ip, of IP addresses here as well as the dhcp lease range so i'm going to leave everything the same for now um just because it it you know this is for demo purposes this will take care of it we'll hit continue takes a couple minutes here okay and then here it's going to tell us, um, it's going to give us some, uh, you know, basic options. So uh, I definitely want to protect users from network threats. I want to protect users from websites. I want scan files. And I may want to send suspicious files to Sandstorm. And Sandstorm is actually a paid service, so it's probably not going to be around in the default configuration for long. But I want to turn it on for now and hit continue. And this is where I'm going to go ahead and, and um, put in my email address. And this is where it's actually going to send um, the uh, backups to. Okay, so I'm done with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And it's given me a basic uh, summary of configurations. And so I'm going to hit continue. And it's finishing up the configuration. And this will take a couple of minutes. Okay, so now the configurations have been applied. Um, this, the firewall rebooted. And now it's time for me to go ahead and log in. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with administrator credentials that I created on the prior step. Okay, so when it came up with the very first screen, um, obviously this is a, just a fresh install, so it's, ask, it's going to ask me for certain pieces of information. So at this point, what I'm going to do is either if I have the serial number and I'm going to go ahead and release this to, to use, I can go ahead and type that registration number in now. Or I can opt to, if I'm going to do a restore, for example, um, I can opt to not register now and hit continue. And it's going to give me a warning. Some features may not be available. Yeah. And there we have it. We're now into the actual dashboard so from here we're going to get into the next phase of the video which is to actually start configuring some of the firewall rules um, start 
looking at some of the settings and just kind of take it to the next level. But for now, for this video, I'm going to stop here because I now have a working firewall. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you at the next stage.